All right, welcome to the Monday, October 10th, 2016 regular meeting of the Board of Education. Andy, will you please call the roll? Are there any additions or to the agenda? All right, can I have a motion to approve the uh, agenda? Yes. Last motion needed for approval of the minutes. Yes. And we are going to jump right in. We have no communications to the board tonight from either of the uh, Upper Arlington Education Associ Association or OAPC. So then we are moving to public participation. Any other, any, we have one speaker tonight. Catherine? Catherine, as a reminder, you probably know if we're aware, but five minutes for each speaker. Thank you very much. Thank you. Is, this, uh, is that okay? Hello, my name is Catherine Smith Ripper, and I'm a remediated dyslexic. And I wanted to be sure to have public notice made of a panel discussion that was conducted last week, actually, uh, last Tuesday. Uh, about the success that Upper Arlington has had and the progress that's been made with intervention for uh, very young children who show dyslexic tendencies. And uh, there's an article in today's paper uh, titled, Parents Praise Upper Arlington's Turnaround to Help Dyslexic Students. And I did want to read uh, one or two sentences uh, which I think uh, indicated the magnitude of the change. Uh, our president for our Upper Arlington Kids Identified with Dyslexia group is quoted as saying, I can't imagine being allowed anywhere near a microphone with this crowd six years ago. And that was largely due to the fact that um, we were seen as maybe hysterical parents, but that we actually didn't know what we were talking about. And so it's been quite gratifying for us to realize that folks who still work in the district who denied dyslexia now recognize and see what can be done. Uh, the other quote I wanted to, to read is one that I felt personally that night. Brett said, personally, I have to pinch myself when I go into meetings about my child. It was surreal to have the director of student services actually suggest things that would help my child. And that is a complete 180 from what all of us had experienced before. And I want to salute um, Superintendent Imhoff for his leadership on this and members of the board who predate Superintendent Imhoff and for their support. Uh, and also recognize uh, Kevin Gorman, uh, Director of Student Services. So thank you very much. Catherine, thank you. Could you do me one quick favor? Because I completely choked in front of this large audience. Okay. Could you say your name? Oh, and say for the record and your address. Sure, I'm sorry. Catherine Smith Ripper, and my address is 2632 Bristol Road. Thank you very much for the update. Okay. Superintendent Emhoff, turning over the floor. I think it's what everyone's been waiting for. Good evening, everyone. Uh, this is a big night for us here in the UA schools as we'll be sharing the recommendation for our facilities master planning process that began uh, 18 months ago. And uh, so uh, we have received a lot of participation and feedback during these 18 months. Uh, we were going through and estimating how many different points of contact we have had during these, uh, dur uh, uh, during the 18 months, which, which is either people attending meetings, 
uh, filling out surveys, a variety of different ways the community has been involved. And we estimate that we've had 5,000 points of contact in this process to date. And we're looking forward to have, have, having many more points of contact as we move forward. Um, as with any process of this magnitude and this depth, there are many, many people to thank. First and foremost, all of those people who have taken time to be a part of this process and, and have dedicated their, uh, their, uh, their time to the process, including everyone who is here tonight. Um, I do want to thank our building team members. We have nine different building teams, as the board knows. Um, and if any of you are here tonight who served on a building team, could you stand up just so we could thank you very much for volunteering so far? Awesome. Thank you. Um, I also want to thank our facilities task force. And they have been with us since even before the process began, helping us to, uh, uh, to design and launch the process. So with the members of the, of the facility task force who are here, would you stand up and be recognized, please? Thank you. And as a part of that great group, we have asked one of the members of that task forward, of, of, of force to come forward and address the board this evening and just tell you uh, a little bit about her experience. So I'd like to introduce Beth Olive to address the board. Beth, thanks for being here. Okay, we are going karaoke style. I want you um, all to know that we are beyond honored and thrilled that we were given the opportunity from Paul and Chris to be on this committee. We uh, bring a variety of expertise. We are from education, construction, architecture, law, um, engineering, all across the board. So we, have, we bring that to the table, but we are also alumni, parents, grandparents, uh, soon to be parents of children, all having children in this school district. We're passionate about where we live and where we come from, many of us are multi-generational people from this committee, so, or that live in this community and are part of this. Um, we just are absolutely thrilled and to represent the um, community. We have taken a lot of time through our meetings to challenge each other and to challenge Chris and Paul and bring up ideas that we think represent the community, not, a, not, you know, not beyond like all of the meetings and all the times we let them, we try to bring our neighbors and our thoughts and our feelings to these meetings and say, how can we represent the greater good? So we want you to know that our heart and soul have been poured into this committee. I also want you to know that um, through this process, when we have viewed all of these buildings, we realize that there has been a lot of really, really good stewardship that has happened with these buildings from our maintenance and housekeeping. These buildings are very, like they have lived beyond the lifespan of, the, of normal school districts and because of the commitment of you all and of our housekeeping maintenance, we have gotten great, great years out of these buildings. So we look at it as our job to make sure that we do what's best to lay out the next 50 to 70 years for the children that are coming. So thank you all, thank you for our opportunity and thank you all for this on. So tonight is about presenting the recommendation for our facilities to all of you as the member of the Board of Education. Um, after our presentation, we're going to have an opportunity for you to ask questions or to make comments. And following uh, tonight, you are going to see at the end of the presentation, we're going to let our community know how they can reach out to each of you as a member of the Board of Ed Ed Education and share their thoughts and, and, and ask any, any questions they have of you in the coming month or two before you all make a final decision on our recommendation tonight. So the first hour of our meeting tonight, we are gonna be dedicating to this facilities process and to our, our, our recommendation. And just wanna remind uh, you and all the people here tonight that we're not asking you to take action on this recommendation tonight because I know it's important to all five of you that you have the opportunity to, to, to hear feedback from our community and we're certainly expecting that you'll be ready to take action in, in, in November or December based upon the feedback you, you will be receiving. Uh, you have several, um, I'm gonna call them documents in front of you tonight. Um, so we felt it was important uh, to uh, give you the information we have gathered during these 
18 months. And so the first uh, document, I will say in quotes, um, is a series of free binders. Um, and uh, that is the feedback we have received from our community. Those are the assessments we have done uh, of our buildings. Those are all of the communications we have shared with our residents. Um, and I think that really does show uh, that a lot of work uh, has happened during, uh, 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 during these 18 months, and we just wanted you to, to, to have a sense of that. Um, also, uh, you are receiving a summary document of this process that, that, that we have put together uh, as the district team of administrators uh, from our design and construction e estimating team. You'll, you'll have an executive summary, and then you'll be getting another a re report from them that's two to 300 pages in length just to document everything that has happened uh, to date. Um, I wanna thank the Board of, of Education for putting this process in place and for your visionary leadership in our community. This has been no small un un undertaking um, and you all have put together a process uh, like no other process that has been attempted in, in UA or Central Ohio uh, and it is really a pleasure to, 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 to work with each of you. Um, I could go on thanking people for quite a while, but I think there are three people uh, that I want to highlight at this point as we are moving forward who have really spent countless hours on the process. Um, over to my left and to your right, we have our, our, our communications department and uh, Karen, Karen Truitt and Colleen Wright. Um, they haven't slept in the last four to five, six, seven days or months, um, but they do a wonderful job for us and I know you all know that. Um, and they have spent so much time getting ready for tonight, but e even beyond that. So thank you, thank you, thank you to Karen and Colleen. Um, and I also want to thank the gentleman behind me. Uh, Chris has been leading us through this process. Chris is an amazing a asset to, to our community and to the school district. Uh, Chris and I get to spend a lot of time together, don't we, buddy? Um, and we are having a ball doing that, um, and we are so privileged to, to, to have Chris on our team, and I wanted to thank him as well. So this is an important step in our process tonight, but as we know, this is not the finish line. Um, so we have three phases in the process, and Chris is going to walk us through that again tonight, as he's done in about 40, uh, 40 different homes in, in, in the last several months. We're going to review that, but we are ending the second phase soon and beginning the third phase. So we still have a lot of work to do, probably another seven months left in our process, and we are, we are going to continually dedicate ourselves to continuing to answer questions, and most importantly, seek feedback from our community. Because your theme for this process has been your voice matters, and we are going to continue practicing that throughout our process. So, uh, so tonight, um, I'm going to make a master plan recommendation to you that is going to detail which option I am proposing for each building. Now it's important to note that this recommendation is not going to tell us how the plan may be put in place over time, but this plan is going to have to be put in place over time. We are not going to be able to do all of, of, of this work at one time. So as we enter the third and final phase of the process, which, which Andy will talk to you about in a little bit, we are going to detail how we're, how, how we're going to make decisions about what to do first and what to do second, et cetera. But again, this will not be able to be done all, all at once. Also, my recommendation tonight is not going to be able to answer how much our bond issue may be in November of 2017, because again, we don't yet know what is gonna be included in that first phase of work, and that's going to be determined in our next phase. So as, as, as we leave here tonight and we look at the recommendation, we are not gonna be able to answer how big of a bond issue may be coming in November of 17. We're also not gonna be able to answer how much work is gonna be done in that first phase because all of those questions are, are going to be handled in our decisions phase. Uh, one of the things I just wanted all of the people who are here tonight to know is that as you all know I've spent time with Chris and I have sat down with each of you over the last week um, as an individual and we have shared with you our recommendation and what we are going to be sharing with e e each of you tonight and so you have, you have had time with this information and I just wanted all of the people here to know tonight that you're not seeing this for the first time uh, here tonight. 
Um, so at this point, I also want to thank our design and construction estimating team, and they are with us tonight, and you'll be hearing from a couple of them, but they have done a wonderful job for us, uh, and um, we just really appreciate all of their service to our community. With us, we, we have Jackie DeGarmo from, from Hilliard Jean. We have Mark Ogden from Turner, Steve, uh, Steve Turks and Amy Ekman from Perkins and Will, and Keith DeVoe from Moody Nolan. And again, they have done a wonderful job for us and we have enjoyed working with them. Um, so at this point, I'm gonna turn it over. Well, actually, I'm gonna review the agenda, Chris. I almost forgot. Uh, so uh, Chris is gonna talk uh, first about the recommendation, excuse me, about the process. I'm gonna start on the fourth item. I'm making uh, a command choice here. And then I'm gonna talk about the feedback and then, and then the recommendations. And then we're gonna, and then we're gonna review the recommended options and Andy's gonna talk about our decisions phase. So at this point, I'm gonna turn it over to Chris just to review our process quickly. Chris? All right, well thank you. Thanks for the opportunity to be here tonight and to kind of summarize our process over the last 18 months. And I know, you know, we're here tonight to, to hear a recommendation from Paul, but you don't get to this point without a long 18 months and a lot of hard work and a lot of, of listening to our community. And so I'm gonna walk through, uh, much like I've done in other sessions about about the process a little that you, that, that you know about and just where we've been and, and how we got to where we are today. And so when this process started, um, we put together a three-phase process, as you know, the assessment phase, the options phase, and the decisions phase. As Paul has already indicated, uh, we are coming to the end of the phase two tonight, the options phase, but still have a lot of work and a lot of listening from our community to do in the decision phase. And we will do that over the next seven and eight months. But in the assessment phase, which started in, in January of 2015, we did a lot of work and we're gonna outline that tonight. We're gonna outline the options phase as well. Um, and then I'll turn it back over to Paul for the recommendation. I wanna talk a little bit briefly about what a master plan is, because that's a very important um, about our recommendation tonight for everyone to understand what exactly a master plan is and, and, and why we're doing it. And so as you look at these puzzle pieces, it's, it's a familiar slide we've used throughout this process. Um, and this, a lot of this thing has happened in the assessment phase, but you have your physical assessment, which is looking at the physical needs of the building. You have your educational assessment, which is looking at those educational aspects of our building and how we are serving the students of Upper Arlington um, through our buildings. And then the financial assessment, which is really the decision phase and how you prioritize the cost and how you're gonna pay for it. So when those three puzzle pieces merge together, it really forms that master plan that we've been working on for the last 18 months and which will lead to our recommendation here shortly. Um, it's important as you look at a master plan to understand that this is a holistic view of the entire district. Of all nine of our school buildings, um, it's a long-term strategy for our district. It's not something that we are recommending to be done now or overnight. Um, it's, a, it's a living, breathing document that we will use over, over the next several years to, uh, to form uh, where we're going with our district. Um, why, why did we do this? You know, what is the point of a master plan? Well, we want to be good stewards of, of our community and, and make sure that we are meeting the educational and financial resources that we have. And so uh, this master plan looks at how do you improve education and the education environments, hopefully reflects what the community values most. It helps us plan for the future and make, and make sure that we are spending our taxpayer money wisely. And so it's, it's, it's visionary, uh, vi looking ahead and creating a vision for the future as it relates as it relates to our uh, facilities. When we started this process early in the assessment phase, um, we put together a, a small committee of residents and teachers and staff and, and, and started talking about what is the lens we're going to look through that is help, going to help define what this master plan is. And those were our guiding principles. And so as we have gone through this process, and, and I, I think the community is used to this, we have shared these guiding principles throughout and talked about, okay, are we meeting these guiding principles, these five guiding principles, um, as, as we move forward and make a recommendation for a master plan. And so those five guiding principles that were put together um, by this small task force um, looked, at, looked at five different areas. And in fact, when we first rolled this out at our first community engagement meeting um, back in, in January of 2015, um, we had four guiding principles. And the feedback at that community meeting gave us a lot of great input and asked us to add a fifth guiding principle, and that's the fifth guiding principle you see there. Um, but as we look at this master plan, we want to make sure that our district's educational environments will champion uniquely accomplished learners, will be fiscally responsible of the community, 
uh, and responsive to the community, will foster and engage relationships, will bolster collaboration and creativity, and then this fifth one that was added from our community engagement session, which is just as important as the other four, is that we will recognize the need to create a safe place to learn and work for the students and staff. So those are the five guiding principles that we use throughout this process um, and, and always referred back to them as we were moving through it. So in the assessment phase, one of the first things we did is conducted an educational assessment. And this was um, our team from Perkins and Will and Moody Nolan looking at how the educational environment is meeting the needs uh, of our student and, and, and staff and, and how are we uh, creating those environments uh, for the future moving forward. And so um, our team led some focus groups with students from the high school, with students from the middle school, and talked about the educational environment and how is it meeting the student needs. And when they, when they talked about, had those discussions, they looked at, at these areas as it relates to the ed educational environment and their impact on education. So lighting and materials and the size of the room, um, how, how the, how the uh, building flows during the day. Um, our team spent a lot of time just observing students in their classroom settings, you know, when the bell rings, watching them move from space to space. And so an educational adequacy assessment is a huge part of, of this uh, process and that can be found online on our website as you know but we have a full report from Perkins Will and Moody Nolan about the educational adequacy of our nine school buildings. The second part of the assessment phase was really our physical assessment and, and this was finding out you know, where are we with our nine school buildings and so one of the first things we did is we worked closely with the Ohio Facilities Construction Commission and asked them to come into our district and, and complete their own assessment. So this is a third party that the state of Ohio offered, uh, um, uh, hired to come into our district, it was at no cost to, to the Upper Arlington City School District, to evaluate our buildings based on their guidelines. And they put together a full report based on the state guidelines uh, for, this dis for our district. And I wanna share that with you tonight, you certainly don't have to read it, but this report here is, is what the state put together based on their guidelines, and it reviews all nine of our school buildings. And we've put this online for the community as well to review um, if they have a few extra days that they wanted to go through it. Um, but that independent assessment is important to us because that was our starting point and really our benchmark of, of where we started, of what we had in our district and what were the needs of our district. And, and you know, this was an assessment that was done by, by a team out of Cleveland that in all likelihood will never work in our district. And so their investment was with the state of Ohio, but to provide us a thorough um, um, facilities assessment for us. And so, they, they looked at that assessment and this is, um, the report is available online and that was our starting point uh, for this process in terms of assessment. Then we had our team from Moody Nolan and Perkins and Will come in and do an assessment as well. And so they used the state of Ohio's assessment as the benchmark and as a starting point and used, and used their guidelines to put together an assessment as well. And so we have a full assessment, a physical assessment that was put together um, by Moody Nolan Perkins and Will as well that you have seen and that is available online as well but um, this assessment uh, takes a deep dive into our district using the state of Ohio's assessment as a as a benchmark and a starting point and really evaluates the whole picture of our district um, everything that the state didn't look at they looked at as well and so that assessment um, was an important aspect of of, uh, of what we did here early in the assessment phase and so their task when they did that assessment though was to look at this um, over time and how could we assess the needs of our district over a certain time period. That's one of the big difference between the state of Ohio and the Moody Nolan Perkins Will assessment is the state assumes you're gonna jump into a project right away. And as, as we know, that is not something we need to do because we have taken good care of our buildings and the needs aren't all right now. Just like what a master plan is, the needs are things over time envisioning what needs to be done. And so, they put together a plan that really fell into three different buckets for us and, and looked at all these areas within our buildings, which are all the areas the state of Ohio looked at as well. And so they looked at those areas and put them into three different buckets, and, and we'll talk about that in just a couple seconds about what they did. But these are the areas they looked at as it relates to the physical assessment of our nine school buildings. And so took this very the same approach that the state did, interviewed our custodians and our maintenance, evaluated our buildings, spent time touring them, and put together an assessment that, again, is available online. As we look at master planning, um, one thing we cannot leave out and, and forget about is our enrollment growth. And that is a very important aspect of, of this whole process. 
So I just want to share briefly with the board tonight where we are with enrollment and where we see it going over the next 10 years. Uh, this is a 10-year uh, enrollment projection that we get done every year, so we're verifying this every year. And so where we are today is about 58, 5,900 students. Over the next 10 years, we expect to be closer to 6,700 students. So that's over a 10% increase that we expect to see in students attending attending our district over the next 10 years. And that that is an important point that we have to make sure that we are accommodating for in our master plan. Do we have the space to, to hold all these students that we're anticipating coming? Now we'll continue to look at enrollment projections every year to make sure they continue on the, on the trend that we're seeing now, but this is the growth that we expect over the next 10 years uh, within, within our district as it relates to enrollment. So as we came out of the assessment phase and entered the options phase, we started looking at, okay, we know our assessment and what it, what, what we need to do to our abilities to maintain them from a physical and educational aspect, but what other options did we have to, to look at our buildings? And so through our building team meetings and through our community engagement sessions, a lot of different options were brought to the table and we really ended up looking at our buildings in, in three different ways. Uh, we started looking at them in a repair plus option for all the buildings, which is really just fixing what we have within our buildings, within the physical assessment. And the plus sign is how to accommodate the enrollment growth that is going to happen over the next, two, uh, next uh, 10 years. And so you will see um, uh, repair plus options um, that were in the options phase um, that came out of that as well. We also had the renovate plus option and the rebuild option. The renovate and the rebuild options um, not only address the physical needs, but also the educational needs um, that came out of both of those assessments. So those were the three buckets things fell into as we looked at options throughout our options phase and evaluated things with, with our building teams and our community and, and where our community gave us feedback on all these options. Finally, as I mentioned earlier, um, the facility, facility needs really fall into three buckets. And those three buckets are zero to five years, five to 10 years, and 10 to 15 years. Um, as you look at the physical assessment only and where are the needs, where are the priorities um, of our district as it relates to those needs, and that's a question Paul and I have been asked a lot throughout this process. Well, what has to come first? Um, what, what needs done right away? And so as you look at that physical assessment, um, what that physical assessment is telling us is that at the high school is where our most needs are in the zero to five year time frame, so in the next zero to five years. In five to 10 years is where our elementaries and Burbank lie, and then in 10 to 15 years is where the middle schools are. And so um, th that's kind of the lens we're looking through as we look to make a recommendation here tonight on, on the master plan and, and the three buckets and the needs uh, of the district. Finally, and this is an important part, uh, important point to, to mention here tonight is um, the costs that, that were that were put to all these options put together for us through the construction expertise of Turner Construction. I wanna make sure the board understands and, re and remembers that this is an all-in number that we have as part of this, a part of these numbers that we're presenting here tonight. This includes your, not only your construction, but also your transition and swing space, your soft cost of your architect fees, um, or your permit fees as well. And so it's a number as you have directed us to make sure that we are pro providing an, an everything number and not just a construction number. And so these numbers are put in 2018, um, 2018 adjusted for inflation. And those are the numbers we rolled out to the community back in April of 2016 when we first uh, let out numbers concerning the options. And so just as a reminder, these are, these are all in costs as we look at it in 2018 dollars. And finally, before I, I turn it back over to Paul to talk about uh, what the community has given us in terms of feedback and what the recommendation will be as it relates to the master plan is, is and Paul mentioned it earlier, is that this process is not over yet. This is, you know, we are at, at, at a point now where we're making a recommendation but still have a long six and seven, eight months to review that recommendation and go into the whole decisions phase. And throughout that decisions phase and, and for the next eight, eight months, it's important that Paul and I continue to as you guys directed us to educate the community, to continue to have conversations and get feedback. And one of the ways we're doing that is through our coffees in people's homes. And, and so Paul and I have, have um, completed to date 39 coffees in, in people's homes. Uh, we have another 15 plus scheduled, um, but we have committed 
um, to, to reach 100 or more coffees here before this process ends. And so um, while I'm not sure our wives are happy about that commitment, um, it's an important commitment to our community to make sure we're listening and we're hearing. And so um, I would just remind you that coffees are ongoing and that we'll continue to have those meetings in people's homes. And in fact, um, if you have friends or neighbors that want to host a coffee, all they need to do is um, call the superintendent's office and we'll get that scheduled because Again, we're at 40, we have 15 more scheduled, and we're gonna go over 100. And so uh, we need to get in homes and educate, and that's an important part of this entire process. And so I'm gonna turn it back over to Paul here to, to get into the, the, the meat of the feedback and uh, why we're here tonight. So thank you. Great, thanks a lot, Chris. Little known fact, Chris and I don't even drink coffee. So, um, <laughs> but we always grab a bottle of water. So it has been great getting into homes and we've enjoyed the conversations. Uh, and we're thrilled that we get to uh, continue to, uh, to, to, to do that. And we really appreciate everyone who's been a part of that. Uh, so, you know, your theme throughout this entire process has been your voice matters. And getting feedback from a community is not an easy task because people are busy. And so our goal has been to continue to reach out again and again and again in as many ways as possible so we can make sure we are hearing from our community in whatever way is most con convenient for them, not for us. And so as we talked about the process at the beginning, we talked about how we were going to form our recommendation. And we talked about a number of data points. And this is a slide that, that, that we show at all the, at the home meetings we've been to. Uh, and all of these data points you see on this slide are currently on our website. And so our community can see every piece of data that we have used to form our recommendation. Uh, they can also see every written comment any person has left for us. So everything is very public and very transparent. And so we have the feedback from our community engagement session in April. Uh, we have the feedback from all of those members of the community that served on our building teams. Uh, we have the feedback from our facilities task force. Uh, we have the feedback from both our community and web uh, online surveys. We had over 2,400 people from our community fill out our online survey, uh, plus uh, several hundred members of our staff. Uh, and that was a great feedback on that. Uh, then we conducted uh, a telephone survey that, that, uh, that included cell phones, and you know that the opinion research firm that conducted that uh, met, uh, met with you at a board meeting uh, about uh, two weeks ago, and they shared all, all the results, and that's also on our website. And then we added a sixth data point recently, and the building teams at both Jones and the high school uh, wanted us to look at some more options. And so the building teams at Jones put forward one new option, and the building teams at the high school put forward two new options. And so we wanted to make sure our community had an opportunity to weigh in on those. And so we had over 1,000 people who actually gave us feedback in really a short period of time on those new options that came from our building teams. Uh, this is a sample of what is on our, on, on our website. I'm just going to show you the high school. I'm not going to walk through all of it tonight, but for each of our data points, we have all of these charts on our website, and so you can go um, and look at what our, our community and staff said um, uh, as a part of, of, of each of these options. And so we thought it was very important just to put all of this information on our website, for instance, these are the 94 people who gave us feedback uh, at the community engagement session in April about the high school. Um, these are the 61 members of the high school building team who gave us feedback about the high school. Uh, this is our facilities task force and what they felt about the high school. These are the 2,200 people who filled out our survey online um, about the high school. These are the 261 members of our staff who gave us feedback about the high school. And then I have a few slides here about the telephone survey, and I know you've seen these, but I thought it, it was important to walk through a few of these again. One of the questions on our telephone survey was, do you think it's more important to repair, renovate, or rebuild our schools, even if taxes have to be increased, or should we prevent taxes from going up, even if money has to be redirected from classrooms and, and instruction in order to make essential repairs? And you see the numbers there at about 63.4% who, who are in favor of the renovate or repair or rebuild, and about 27.6% uh, want to keep taxes from, from, from going up, and about 9% are unsure. Uh, and the margin of error on this telephone survey was about 5%. Uh, 
Um, I will tell you, and we are used to looking at these types of numbers, and my experience tells me from doing this for a long, long time, that it is very uncommon to get at or above 60% in answer to any question. Um, and, so when, and so when we saw these results, this was very significant. Uh, we also asked um, if the community thought we needed to do uh, as, as, as much as possible to, to offer the most advanced education, uh, or if we just needed to do more of the minimum just to make sure the buildings remain serviceable. And again, you'll see 66.7 wanted the most advanced ed education possible. And on the online surveys from our community, we uh, received a lot of feedback about the high school. And it was overwhelming that people wanted us to rebuild the, the high school. Um, and, so we had, and so we decided to ask that specific question on this survey as well. So we'd have a scientific uh, data point for that. And you see when we asked if it's a good or bad idea to rebuild the high school, 61% um, say it's a good idea, 31.9% a bad idea, and 7% unsure. And again, I'll go back to what I said earlier. When you get to 60%, that is a significant uh, a response. And so uh, that's just a sampling of some of the data. But again, all the data is, is on our website. And I'm going to share with you my recommendation at this point. Uh, but before I do that, I just wanted to mention, and I've said it, Twice, Chris has said it. Your, I, I predict Andy is also going to say it. This is a master plan that is not going to be done all at once. This is a master plan that is going to need to be implemented over time because a master plan is a long-term plan or strategy for addressing our facility needs. So this is not all going to happen at the same time. So I'm going to start with the uh, high school and I am recommending rebuild options E or F. Uh, let me just talk briefly about the high school options again. We had six different options for the high school that came from our building team, and they are really in three different buckets. Options A and B called for a three-story high school on our current piece of property. Options C and D called for a three-story high school and also wanted us to purchase property on Brandon Road and expand the size of our site. Those were options C and D. Options E and F were for a four-story high school and keeping the high school on our current footprint. So I'm recommending that we do not purchase any land at the high school. I'm also recommending that we construct a four-story high school to maximize use of our site. And the reason I am recommending options E or F is I believe that we need to gather more feedback from our community in the next phase of the process to determine what is the best way to actually lay out the site and should the front door of the school be on Zollinger or Brandon. And I believe we just need more opportunity for feedback from our community. So again, I'm recommending option E or F for the high school. For both Hastings and Jones, I'm recommending a, uh, the, uh, the repair plus options. I want to be clear at Jones, I'm recommending that we do not purchase property. Uh, this is the repair plus option, which would not include additional property at Jones. For the elementary schools, I'm recommending a renovate plus option at Barrington, a rebuild option at Greensview, the renovate option A at Tremont, and the rebuild option at both Wycliffe and Windermere. And again, I'm gonna have Steve and Amy come up in just a moment and they're gonna walk you through all of these in depth. Finally, at Burbank, I'm recommending the re repair plus option. Wanna give you the dollar figures on all of these options. And because I did not zero in on one option at the high school, but rather listed two possibilities, the range for the entire master plan in 2018 dollars is between 304 and 309, almost 310 million dollars. But again, this number five now, I think I'm gonna say this, this is not all gonna happen at the same time. This is gonna need to be separated into phases. And during the next phase of the process, we will need to determine as a community what's gonna happen in that first phase of the process, which will be on the ballot in November of 2017. Uh, one of the other things I did want to mention, and then Andy is going to dig into this a little bit more, uh, the state of Ohio uh, actually assigns 
a bond capacity to each school district um, and, 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 and our remaining voted bond debt capacity is approximately $215 million. Um, finally, as Steve and Amy are ready to, to, to come forward, um, I wanted to make a note because they're going to be showing you plans like the ones you see for, uh, for Burbank um, and the plans that show new uh, construction are really just boxes on paper at this point just so we can determine that a new and or a renovated building could actually fit on the site. Uh, we will not know exactly what a building is going to look like or how it's going to be laid out until a bond issue in the future would, would pass and then we would go through a design process and at that point that, that design process again would, would have to include our entire community because uh, what, because what you told us, as far as listening to, to, to our community and making sure that, 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 that their voice matters, means that even as we get to the design phase, we have to continue to work with our community to make sure any, 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 any future improvements are reflective of what our community wants. So as we look at these boxes on paper tonight, remember nothing has been designed. We don't know where gyms are going to be or courtyards or play areas. That all would, would, would happen in a design phase. So with that, again, I'm going to pass it off to Steve and Amy, and they're going to walk us through each of these options in more depth. Steve and Amy? Thank you, Paul. Okay. Before you turn this. I forgot a slide. Uh, during the decisions phase, there are also several other issues that we've not yet dealt, dealt with and we're going to have to discuss with our, our community. Uh, one is just the whole issues of academic and the athletic space used by our students during the construction period. And so we want to make sure we, uh, 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 we engage our community in that. Uh, and so that will happen during, during the decisions phase. Uh, we also have been talking about uh, a welcome office or a welcome center uh, so we can have a place for new families to come and register all of their students at the same place at the same time. Almost all of the neighboring districts have this um, and we would like to have this as a place for our new families to come and register students. Um, we still need to work on the overall site layout of the schools, especially the high school, uh, and really looking at where do the uh, uh, where do our athletic fields and parking go? Uh, we would like to explore the possibility of a privately funded alumni room or space at the high school. Again, that would be privately funded. Um, and one of the things, since, uh, since we have recommended that uh, we keep our current central office, because you remember one of the Jones options, uh, it, it had called for us to tear down that building and move it to another area that, that, that we had not determined. But because we're not recommending additional property at Jones, uh, we are going to be staying in that building into the future and it's an aging building and we need to look at what are the costs going to be for us to actually stay in that building and, and, and continue to use it. So these are some of the other items we're going to have to talk about during, uh, uh, during the decisions phase and we're going to have to engage our community in all of these items as well. Now it's your turn. Thank you. Okay, it's our pleasure to be here this evening and to share a little bit more detail about each of the nine recommendations. Before we launch into that though, there's a, a, a couple of overarching general comments that might help put things in context. And uh, these, so these, these initial comments will apply to all of the options that you're going to see. All of the options deal with the expected enrollment increases. Specifically, the, uh, in terms of classroom capacity, they deal with the six-year enrollment uh, number. As far as the core facilities in your schools, and a, an example, a great example of a core facility is the space we're in, the cafeteria. Uh, they address the 10-year enrollment. So every option addresses enrollment. Every option also addresses, uh, in, within the existing buildings, things that were identified in the uh, uh, 
physical adequacy assessment. In other words, if the mechanical system needs to be repaired or replaced, that's addressed. Plumbing, a, a lighting, uh, ADA issues, the American with, American with Disability Act. So if you've got uh, accessibility issues within a school, that's gonna be addressed. Every school, uh, a secure entry will be addressed. And uh, also importantly with that enrollment piece, all day kindergarten is also addressed in all of the options. The, the renovate options uh, go a little bit further in terms of right sizing uh, classroom spaces and providing some collaboration areas. Okay, so this is just some overarching comments. So let's start with the, the high school. As Paul mentioned, there are two options that are being uh, pushed forward into the decisions phase. Those are options E and options F. You'll see those side-by-side -side, site plans as comparisons so that you can look back and forth between the two. Let me just uh, quickly explain that north is to the left on these, on these drawings. And so this is Brandon Road here uh, and Ridgeview. The existing building that we're in sits right here. And so in both options, the new building is set free and clear of the existing high school. It allows you to build a new building, keep this building operational, and uh, when the, building is, the new building is complete, move students over, uh, demolish the existing building, and then build the complement of play fields. Both options have the same amount of square footage in terms of the building, the same numbers of classrooms, the same amenities in terms of the building itself. Uh, both options have the same amount of play fields. Uh, in, in, in each one. One of the options in terms of play fields though is option E retains the stadium in its current location. Although I would share with you that uh, what will remain of what sits out on site today is the uh, fairly recent uh, synthetic turf field and the home site bleachers. Uh, because of the proximity of the new construction and the, and the age and the condition of the home, home site bleachers and the press box, that's all being replaced as well as the track, okay? So even in option E, there's quite a bit of work on the existing stadium. Now, option F pushes the stadium. It's a, it's a brand new stadium. It pushes it more interior into the site. Uh, you'll notice there's some, some differences that uh, are afforded in option F. Uh, as a result of that, for instance, a large parking lot, more evenly distributed parking, perhaps you could say, uh, in this option that gets a larger parking lot uh, next to the stadium. Uh, this option also, as Paul mentioned, uh, puts the front door really in the core academic spaces uh, alongside uh, Zollinger Road. Uh, in option E, the core academics are in this location, again, more interior to the site. The main entrances here are really off of Brandon. So those are some, 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 some basic differences between uh, those two options. Again, as a new building, of course, all the spaces are right size. Um, uh, accessibility is, is ensured through, uh, through the design of the building. Um, and so forth. So, move on to the next one. Okay. Okay. Next is Hastings, Amy's not to So Hastings is Repair Plus, which um, addresses the physical uh, assessments. Um, you'll see there's no uh, renovate or rebuild on this because it actually currently meets the enrollment capacity with its spaces that it has. So it doesn't really need any enrichment. So really what's happening here is addressing the things that we spoke about earlier, um, HVAC, or ADA or technology, things like that. With Jones, uh, similar to Hastings, again, a, re a repair plus option. Um, so again, all of those physical inadequacies, ADA, uh, ADA uh, Jones really needs a secure entry uh, vestibule. Uh, and so you'll see, you're seeing here color coding for really uh, a lot of repair in the existing building, a little uh, renovation there at the front entry. 
But to handle that core capacity that I mentioned, that 10 year target, we do need to add some additional space to the cafeteria at Jones. Barrington Elementary uh, is being recommended as the renovate plus option B. The existing building uh, has a, a bit of it, the, 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 the pods, they're called the pods at Barrington, are being removed and returned to play space, uh, getting uh, some additions onto the existing building one to the, uh, the north side of the current media center and another uh, towards the rear of the school that wraps around the gym. Uh, Two-story addition and sort of in keeping with that two-story character of the existing building. This returns the, uh, the main entry, uh, which is right here in this corner, around back to Brandon Road to what was the original main entry to Barrington Elementary School underneath the tower. Uh, it's a much more identifiable location for the entry. Um, and so this is also handling as a renovate option, classroom size, uh, expansions and, and collaboration type spaces in the building. Um, at Greensview, it's a rebuild option, but there is a um, portion of the building that will be renovated and will remain, which is the most recent addition, the 2009 and the 1997 gym addition will remain and will become the new front door for Greensview. Um, and then the rest of the building is um, totally rebuilt. It's rebuilt free and clear of the existing building so that that can happen in the similar phasing as Steve described before. And it has those right-sized classrooms. It has that all-day kindergarten space and all the other things that the rebuild options have that Steve mentioned earlier are common to the rebuild options. Um, in addition, the place, the play fields will be um, south on the site and will be contiguous. Okay, Tremont. <clears throat> uh, as you know, Tremont has uh, recently opened addition uh, on the north side of the building uh, another under construction right now and so the uh, renovate plus option a is being recommended which uh, does a number of things mainly renovates the interior of the existing building does do a bit of a, a rebuild in this section of the building to uh, go to a two-story uh, uh, sort of leg to the L here to gain some additional classroom capacity. Um, and so as a renovate option, it's going into the existing building, making classrooms that are now uh, somewhat undersized and larger. And then at Wycliffe, uh, somewhat similar to Windermere, uh, the, uh, the, the rebuild option is, is being uh, proposed or recommended. Uh, this is entirely new construction now. Uh, sets free and clear of the existing uh, Wycliffe building. It actually pushes the building closer, more frontal to uh, Wycliffe Road, which is nice given its namesake. Uh, moves the entry to the corner and uh, replaces the current building location with uh, parking. It allows play space to be sort of contiguous in this L shape around the building. It retains the existing castle playground, which was a community project uh, and, and, and near and dear to a lot of people's hearts. Again, as a rebuild, all new space, all right size space, right proportions, and right relationships. Uh, so Windermere is a similar courtyard option to Wycliffe. Um, the building team looked at several options for this, and one of which was um, using the empty green space on the site to place the new building so it could be free and clear, like we're trying to do in, in many of the other rebuild options. Um, in this case, it didn't make a lot of sense. It was getting too close to the neighbors. It didn't really have an identifiable front door. So the option for rebuild actually, um, and this north end actually goes over part of where the existing building is. 
Uh, we're still investigating whether or not that could happen with students still in the building and, re and building this part new and waiting to do that later or um, relocating students to another location for a year. That's still under investigation. But essentially, the majority of the building is free and clear, but not all of it. Um, this allows for where the old building was a much larger parking and drop-off area, which should alleviate some of the traffic issues that occur over here and still allows for a large green space and hardscape play area for the students. One more. So the last one tonight is Burbank, um, which for repair actually has a lot of renovate and some rebuild on it. Um, there's some things that are not able to happen um, with their program now that need to be accommodated, so there's um, some renovation needed in there. Um, some of those things are um, some special education spaces that are right size and appropriate. Um, art room that's, again, right size and appropriate. A nurse's office that um, can actually accommodate six students. Um, secure entry vestibules in a couple of locations. Um, at the main entry here off of the, the parking circle and the parking lot and then where the parents would now drop off there would be a secure entry vestibule and the administrative office which is now here would move near that secure entry vestibule for um, security purposes. I think that's about it. So what's next? Um, and what is next is we need feedback from our community on this recommendation. So uh, we're going to be uh, communicating this through as many means as, as, as we know. Uh, we're going to share the recommendation. We're obviously, uh, we have a video of this presentation we're going to put online. And we're asking that our, our, our community members reach out to each of you as school board members with their comments or questions. And uh, we're asking you, obviously, to take that in, into account and consider taking action on the recommendations uh, based upon your thoughts and the feedback you are going to receive over the next month or two. And so we will be publishing uh, all of these uh, uh, e email addresses. Um, Matt had asked me to put your cell phone numbers on there as well, but I chose not to do that. Just, you know, it's just a joke. Um, and so we're going to be putting that out just so everyone knows how to, uh, to, to, to reach each of you. And I know that's important, and I know you really want to hear from people and so we're going to make sure that we communicate that out in as many ways as possible so people understand that. And then we're going to go into our third and final phase as soon as you all have taken action uh, on a master plan. Um, and the decisions phase again is incredibly important. So Andy uh, is going to be front and center during that phase and he's going to walk us through what's going to happen. Andy? All right, so you've seen the 18 months so far of work and what it's culminated to. And knowing there's still about eight months left of work. And where we are headed is the, the finance advisory board uh, part of it, the decision phase. And that's gonna consist of, that's gonna consist of between 10 and 12 community members that have a, a uh, financial and business expertise. And they're gonna dive into basically four items. And I'll come back to this slide, let me go to the next area. So really four areas of focus. First, it's going to be on our, our operating side of it, our operating and levy needs. We will review the operating needs and they will issue a, some initial uh, comments and thoughts about it. We will look at the master plan scope of it and review the scope of that uh, and the cost of the work. We'll look at the phasing part of that and we talked a little bit about that. I'll jump onto that in a minute um, and implement uh, various schedule options on, on how we would do the master plan. And then also then considering the funding options. So this group would come, we would meet in January and February and really review those areas. And then they would come with some initial um, points or comments that we would then take to the community. And going back to the previous page, so then you would see the community feedback that would come in the uh, March to May timeframe. And what that would consist of is very much what you just heard Paul go over uh, in the first phase or second phase, right? It would be a building team meeting, it would be a community, community team meeting, it would be a community wide survey again. It would include a, a task force meeting, and then it would also be a phone survey. That was very valuable input for us, and to stay true with what we were saying about how the voice matters, once we get to a point, we want to bring this back to the community and get some feedback. And once the community gives some feedback, then we will bring it back to our, our, our finance advisory board, 
and really review those comments, and then they will make some additional uh, comments and points to me, and then which will lead to, in uh, late spring, early May, a uh, recommendation from me to you on two items, basically, our operating side of it, so the operating funding, um, and then also the uh, funding for the phasing and the uh, scope of the master plan. So both those will come to you with the idea of conversation, and then we will uh, look for a, uh, a basically a combined levy with operating and the bond in November of 17, uh, based on how that plays out. So this will be the next phase over the next several months, but you can see it's very becoming quicker and quicker now. We had 18 months of the first two phases, and now we'll have about six or seven months of this last decision phase. Um, and very much important, again, the community feedback is very important to us on this. So then I want to hit on two other items that we've already talked to uh, once already or five times already, but it's important that we kind of hit this again so everyone's on the same page. First of all, what will lead to, and it will lead to a lot of our discussion when it comes to the phasing, the scope, and, and other areas of the, map, and the funding of the master plan is our, de our debt capacity. And as Paul mentioned, that comes from the state, and we have about $215 million to work with. You saw the recommendation of over $300 million, so therefore there will be some discussion through this decision phase on how we stage and go forward from there. And lastly, I do want to hit on what Paul mentioned earlier, and those are the five areas that are part of this decision phase too that we will look at are five other items. Um, once again, it's the transitional of the academic and the athletic space. It is the uh, look at the welcome office or welcome center, the uh, overview of the site layout and the schools for the athletic fields and parking. Uh, consider and look at the, uh, the possibility of a privately funded alumni uh, room. And then finally, the repairs and renovations to the district uh, office, central office. All those being part of that, so we all know what really what's going to be addressed on this last phase. Now I'll turn it back over to Paul to take it from here. Uh, so again, at this point, we want to open it up to, uh, to the board members uh, for your uh, comments or questions. Board, any questions? You want to pass the mic down to Um, I just want to thank everybody in this room who's played a part in this, and really you all have. If you've not been involved in any part of the process until tonight, I think we're all so appreciative of you taking the time and come, to come and learn about what, what we'd like to do. Um, it's some really good work. It's, it's been 18 months of hard work, and it's such an exciting process. I'm so excited about where we are now. But I also want to share with everybody, I think all five of us are the same way. If you have a question, a comment, a concern, email us. We will get right back to you. We really, really, really want to hear from you um, and, and understand your concerns. Um, and conversely, if you're really excited about something, let us know that as well. So thank you. Are there any other questions? I was hoping Andy could just explain a little bit more about the Financial Advisory Committee because as we're launching into this next stage, how many individuals and the, the scope on in the community? So this group will be made up of 10 to 12 members of the community and it will be really focused on uh, individuals that have the expertise in the business and finance world. And will, which will lead to um, some very uh, detailed and um, lengthy meetings in January and February to really review those four items we talked about, which were their scope, you know, the operating needs and how we fund and finance and phase in the, in the scope and also phasing in the master plan. So that will be a uh, really what we focus on the next uh, basically eight months. Or I, I guess one of the things I'd add to that, Robin, is you know we're really blessed here in UA to have so many members of our community who have so much expertise in so many areas. Um, I am constantly amazed when we need help with fill in the blank. It always seems like one of the leading national experts is a neighbor, right? And they are here and they have been published on the topic. I mean, I'm just blown away by, by this all the time. And so we really want to harness this private sector expertise 
so they can come alongside of us. These are people who do this kind of work every day. Uh, we do this once in a generation, once in a half a century. And so bringing that to the, uh, to the fold, and again, answering, um, answering all of these questions that Andy talked about, because we have a lot of different things happening here. We have operating needs and we have bond needs. Uh, we also don't know what should go first and what should go second. And we want them to look at the scope and look at our estimates. We want them to look at everything and then give us those findings and then again, we start a whole process of engaging our, our community again. We go through this all again so the community can give feedback to, to that group. And then all that feeds into what Andy's going to eventually recommend to you. So this is a robust process, but we think one of the strengths of that process is harnessing all that private sector expertise. Thank you, Carol. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank uh, Chris and Paul for leading us through this process. This is um, an amazing process. I don't know if uh, any of you are familiar with other school districts, but for us to spend 18 months on just getting your feedback is a, a testament to us wanting to know what our community wants as a vision for our, for our future. And we really do care what our community um, vision is what their voice is and um, I just like to thank Paul and Chris for making that time available to us and for our community and give us all our feedback and and really what this master plan is going to do it's going to allow the board not just this board sitting here in front of you now it's going to allow the board from 5 to 10 to 15 years from now to use this master plan to make informed decisions based on what the community's vision is. We are not going to be just hoping that our strategy is correct. We are going to know that the strategy that the board is taking is something that reflects the wishes of the community. And so I just wanted to let everyone know here in this room and in, in Upper Arlington is that when we say your voice matters, we truly mean it. And I think you can see here that we have spent a lot of time in getting your feedback. We've had six plans um, on the high school alone to come up with two that we think feel meet your expectations for the future and getting your kids into the best colleges and the best careers possible. So we are trying to keep your vision alive and I hope that we have, we have done that in, in um, in a transparent way that you feel that we've met your wishes and uh, we are looking forward to seven more months of feedback this is not the end this is just the beginning of figuring out how to put now the master plan it's a master plan for the future into place so thank you very very much paul and um, i appreciate this process it's taken a lot of time away from your family and um, Certainly our community is um, grateful for all the time and the process you put into this. So thank you for everyone and the staff too for helping us. Well, I just have one quick question to end on. Can you tell us what is next for the board for November and December? We have two meetings coming up at the end of the year. Yeah, and so um, we're, we are basically gonna wait for, uh, for your feedback. You're gonna be hearing from our community uh, what we would like to happen is you to take action on this recommendation in November or December uh, based upon uh, what is right for all of you. Um, and then as soon as you have taken action on that, then Andy is going to be coming to you as early as December uh, with his appointments to the Financial uh, Advisory Board. And then um, Andy's going to get to work uh, with that team and they're going to work really hard in January and February. So we're ready to come back out to our community in March and April to do our another round of meetings and feedback. So, Carol, did you have anything you wanted to? Okay, great. Great, uh, thank you very much. And so uh, just, uh, I guess one last re reminder because I haven't said it enough times, this is not gonna all happen at once, right? This is gonna happen over time uh, because this is a master plan and we do not need to do all the work at once. Uh, as Chris mentioned, there are different times when work needs to be done over the next decade and a half. And so we do have the luxury of time, uh, and that is important to us. Uh, so at this point, I would recommend uh, that we take a short break.
um, and that we reconvene the meeting in about five or ten minutes. Is that acceptable? Yeah, very acceptable. Do we We're on a break. Are we okay? No,